yeah, calculating times and cyclones. We're in the green, we can see it climbing. We're in the orange, it's climbing faster. We're in the red, it's climbing the fastest. It hits full, we have been seen. Right, so if you want a stealth game, uh, maybe a horror game, uh, <clears throat> whatever, something like along those lines, beautiful little system to do that with. Hey, I continuing on with the conversation about AI, I wanted to discuss probably a little more sight cones, advanced sight cones maybe. So, and of course I just zoomed out because why not? Um, here I have this fancy thing. I'm going to show you how to build this. So ideally, what I have is I, I put an image. I don't really have a good image to do this with. Um, I'm sure you guys might. But I have an image and I can adjust it. So the thought process of this video is if this is our player, if we go into here, I want this to slowly climb. And when it hits full, the AI has seen us. And if the player moves into a different part of the cone, say over here or over here even, it fills faster. And again, if they move more into the direct site, it fills much faster. So you have <coughs> kind of a rate of sight. So I wanted to show you how we can do that. And of course it, it's going to be custom actions because that's just cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Playmaker Tools Custom Action Wizard and we can call this anything. Our Sight System. Mind you, I, I use this same system for combat to inflict damage uh, in the ways of attack cones. Um, I literally use this exact same thing. I find this system is far more dependable. Uh, it is <clears throat> more enjoyable to play as a player when you have a, a nice, dependable, easy attack cone you're using compared to just triggers or physics and stuff. They, they tend to be flaky at best um, I find them just more or less shitty so I, I don't I don't use them I, I they're they they drain the fun out of it so after we've hit that we have a script called our site system and I can click on that or double click on that and we open up a blank action so Now, you could build all three of those cones into one action and <clears throat> label them, you know, accordingly. And I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just more or less make the one cone and we'll just use it three times. Pretty simple. So, the one thing we're going to need is we'll use a... Everything's going to be public because we're in an FSM. We want an owner default target or owner, FSM owner default. And you can name this anything you want. Uh, eyes, player, unit, you know, do whatever. Anything you want. Call it cat for all I care. Call it ice cream. So the other thing we're gonna need is a public float, oh, FSM float for the angle. A public FSM float for the range. And <clears throat> the, the trick about cones like this is the fact that they're not actually cones at all. I know they look like cones. Oh man, do they look like cones. Um, right? They're fully adjustable. You can do all kinds of things. And they're called cones. And I'm drawing arcs for the debugging. But when it comes to the logic, there are, they aren't cones. We're not dealing with cones. Uh, we're actually dealing with complete spheres. All right, we are dealing with um, 
actual full spheres and that's the way we want to deal with it and I know it might seem weird it's, it's almost a bit of a magic trick so for example we want for our vision detection we want we're, we're going to do an overlap sphere essentially that's all we're going to do and then we're just going to say hey the angles where's our target in this sphere and and you know compared to our forward and are we in whatever angle you know whatever radius we're in and that's kind of where all this magic comes into play we we debug it with an arc so that we don't see the whole sphere we only see the part that actually matters to us so with that said we also need a we're going to want a public fsm bool because we need to oh, oh, yeah, we need to invert you'll see what that is a public fsm int and then we use the two little brackets and that's going to be our layers because we're doing an overlap sphere it's going to be a physics based uh, detection so it's based on layers so the other thing <coughs> is we could put in a public bool. I'm not going to do an FSM bool, just a regular bool for every frame. I'm going to actually put that one at the bottom. And what else do we want? We want, oh, we need events. So public FSM event, um, we'll say uh, has target. Sure. We also need a public fsm game object for the returned uh, object I guess you could call it for whatever we see now if you want to get fancy we could do various things like <coughs> uh, we can call these action sections and you can give these things little titles like this is our return side of stuff you know, and there's, there's, there's numerous things that we can actually do with all this. We can turn them into sliders or whatever. And that just, it doesn't do anything logic wise. It's just for the action, it'll visually appear different. And you, you'll see it when we go back there. So we have public override void on enter. We also need a public override on update. We're going to need a public void. We'll say do site or do do the action anyways. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put the logic into the enter and I'm not going to put it into the update. I'm going to be putting it into here and then calling this one from these. So the other thing, because we like debugging and it's fun to do, is we want a public override on gizmos. Now you have two of these. You have on gizmos and on gizmos selected. So on gizmos is it's just all the time. It is just on. On gizmos selected is when you select the unit and you open up the FSM, the, the debugging comes up. So what do we have in the ways to start off with let's do with um, our selected so we need we need a vector 3 starting point and that is going to be our fsm dot get owner default target this is a special way to use this thing uh, we called it unit now that's a game object this is a vector that's why there's an error it don't really don't like it so we want the transform which is the component we want the position which is a vector now we have a starting point we can also let's put another thing in here. Let's do a public color. 
Um, we'll just call it debug color. Okay, so we're gonna do a um, no, it's not a gizmo. We're, we're not actually dealing with gizmos. We're dealing with handles. So handles, <coughs> which should give me an error because we're not using the right thing, and we have to be using Unity Editor. So I'm just gonna add that, which adds it up here, and you can just type it out, whatever. Um, so handles dot color. The first thing I'm gonna tell it is it is our debug color. So the next thing is I want handles dot draw solid arc and now it needs parameters that's what this little bracket guy is he's a parameters so what you can if I mouse over it you can see in there it wants a center point a normal from the angle and the radius <coughs> so our center point is going to be our starting point the normal uh, it's kind of which way is it going to be drawing this thing like because you could be if it's 2d you, you would want it on uh, I, th I think the X or whatever right so you're kind of drawing it up and down so in our case 3d I'm gonna go with vector 3 dot up All right because I want this thing just to be flat there it is the angle now this is a sneaky part let's put two angles in there um, so if I just write angle dot value and range dot value uh, it why does that give me an error so we have the starting point the normal Oh, we need the from. Um, yeah, we need one more in there. Um, so from, because uh, it's also it's kind of like your 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 direction, right? So if I say, uh, what else? If we start it from this guy's transform his forward direction so it's starting from his forward direction but the thing is when you're drawing an arc <laughs> if we start from the forward we're drawing the arc this way well that's no good because what about this side right so you have to kind of take your angle and cut it in half and shift it over <sighs> right <clears throat> so as you can see like I, I did the same thing over here so this is, and I'm just going to copy this guy, and I'll bring him over. Um, so what it is, is we have to have a new direction. So now we're dealing with, with these quaternions, and those are probably a big old scary thing. <clears throat> so what we're saying is we need, we need to get an angle of of half of our negative angle which is why there's a negative sign here right on the y so zero the x zero on the z this is all the y um but we're dealing with the angle right but we don't want to go this way and if we do negative we go this way so we're gonna we're gonna start by going this way but we're only gonna go halfway so that's why we're doing a negative angle divided by two All right so we're gonna go halfway and then we're gonna start from here and then draw our angle and we'll end up with this nice little pretty angle and that's going to be based on uh, this guy's again this guy here so we're gonna bring him we're gonna we're gonna multiply that by his transform I don't need transform in there a whole bunch of times by our FSM target like whatever units here 
his transform forward. So whatever way he's facing, that's what we're basing this off. So if we turn him, the whole arc will change too. All right. So like I said, this part here, we don't want to base it off the forward. We're going to base it off our new direction. Off of this guy. So now we have a we have the colors, we have this thing, and we have we're drawing a solid arc. So just just that, if I just save that. Now, there's no logic involved in the ways of actually doing anything. Um, but I'll show you now that we have, here, I'll get rid of these ones, the previous ones that I made. And let's go into, um, our site system. So we have a site system. So I could say, well, it's currently on the owner. The angle could be anything. The range, 10. Uh, we haven't dealt with this stuff yet. And then we have the color. Right? And you can make the color anything you want. You give it any kind of transparency you want. Right? Now, where the hell is it, right? Where is it? Now, that's, that's because it's just the way Playmaker works. I, we have to re kind of select it now that we've set it up. And it should be should be there. I mean, it could make it a liar of me. I don't know. Um, apparently, it is going to make a liar of me. Do, 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 do. And that could be. Because uh, I think I have it on selected compared to the normal one. And I, I think I've dealt with issues with that before where the playmaker didn't want to do with the on selected. Or maybe it was the other way around. I'll, 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 I'll double check it. It's just a matter of changing one, one little word in it. Eventually, when it opens up, uh, I did on draw gizmos. In this one, I did on draw and gizmos selected. Yes, yeah, so I, I think that's where we have the issue. Is we need it on draw action gizmos. Pretty sure that's what it's called. On draw action gizmos. Yeah. So that should fix it. <coughs> Normally, you'd have the selected and non-selected. Playmaker just seems to not like that very much. Don't know why. So let's clear our little errors or our warnings. Let's grab our object and open them up. And there's our cone. All right. So like I said, now we can alter the color all we want. And we can adjust its range. And like I said, the angle, um, it's starting in the middle. And as we expand it, see how it, it's fanning out. It's not going this way. It's fanning, right? And that's, that's, what, that's what we want, right, as the angle gets bigger. Because if, if you don't put that negative angle divided by 2, like I said, it starts from the middle and it goes this way. And that's... That's garbage. We don't freaking want that. It's silly. So, anyways, that is how we're gonna do our debug. Like I said, if you want to make it solid color, you know, fly at it. You want to do whatever color, and if it literally, we can just literally copy and paste this now, and um, just set up numerous layers of it, right? And we can have a, a stacking effect. And that's ultimately how, how we're going to run it. So <coughs> how do we actually get the data, though? What about the actual freaking data? Okay, it's pretty. What about the data? So let's look at that. And again, we're just going to open the script. Do, 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 do. And and this is this is kind of where the layers come in. The invert um, 
most of the time, if I was doing this by code, I wouldn't have the invert there, but with the way Playmaker handles uh, the layers, it is how it is done. There is actually one more thing we have to add to the layers. Because right now it looks like it is literally just a array of integers. Because Playmaker doesn't like to do the actual layers. Um, so it takes this information and it converts it by doing a UI UI hint dot Uh, layer mask Pretty sure that's what it's called Okay, hmm. right, well, we'll take a look at that in a second Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at it right now. You'll you'll find, especially if you're starting off, uh, if, if you don't know exactly what words to use, a lot of these things can be found. And and, and this is this is this is this is how I learned a lot of this stuff is uh, you, just looking at other actions, seeing what they actually used for various things, right? And if I go into any of the raycast, you'll see they have. Um, where is there layers? It is dot layer. Why didn't it give me that option? Right? Because that should be UI hint layers. And it just it just converts this into the actual layer system. So when it comes to uh, this guy we are going to say if every frame then we are no, let's, it's, let's invert that put an exclamation at the top so it inverts it so if it's not every frame then we can do our finish which just ends the FSM and if and now if we're in the update cycle if every frame then we'll do this so if we're not every frame we're going to do this if we are every frame we're doing this so what is this one it's going to be do site so it's going to do the site whatever we do in here and then it's going to call finish we're going to copy that and stick it down here as well so if it is every frame we're just going to call do site and that's all we need there. So what is do site? Okay, so <clears throat> what we need is colliders, because that's how we do an overlap cast. So this little guy here means this is a array of this. So we have an array of colliders. And we can call this anything. You can call it colliders, you can call it targets, call it anything. So what does that equal? What does this array equal? This array equals physics. So we're going into the physics system and we're going to do a overlap sphere. So this wants our position and the radius. Well, we know from our debugging here that our position is going to be our starting point. So I'm just literally just going to take this guy and stick them right there. So we're using the exact same position as our debugging. What is our radius? Well, our radius is our range dot value. That's it. That's all we have. So, okay, that is our overlap sphere. We just completed an overlap sphere. We've collected now everything that's in these colliders. So. What does it mean if we do that though? So <clears throat> now to mo not make this complex, right? Because like I said, we could put all three different levels of that site into this and I'm not gonna 
do that. So we'll layer it. The other thing is we could collect all of the colliders, put them into an array, uh, and output that. And I'm not going to do that either because it, it'll just complex things. And we don't. I don't want to make this too complex. So if I don't know, let's do yeah, let's go if uh, colliders. So if our array length is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, we're going to do something. If it's not, then we're not going to do anything because we didn't hit nothing. So don't do anything. So if our colliders do have something in them, if we've hit something, we need to test because we just did a sphere. We don't necessarily want that freaking sphere, right? We want an angle. So the one thing we're going to need is we're going to need a vector three. Um, let's say our forward. And that equals, again, I'm going to literally grab this same thing. So we're talking about to this unit. We don't need his position. Uh, but we do want his forward. So let's just capture that here so we can call it nice and easy. And then we also now need, um, we're going to do a four loop. This is how you do arrays and loop through arrays in code in, in comparison to Playmaker where you do the uh, array get next same idea so four <clears throat> so for an integer we always do do an integer typically so we'll, we'll say for integer i equals zero so we're saying we just created an integer the name is i he is zero if i is less than colliders dot length so we're just kind of doing a statement. So if if our integer we've just created is less than the length, which it should be, because that's why we're here, um, then we want to i plus plus, which will increment the i. So now it i isn't zero; it's now a one. You know, it does the code again. Now it's two. Now it's three. Right. So that's how we do the loop. So everything here now is inside this loop. Okay, so we need another vector three, and this is we'll call it our target position, and that equals to our colliders, right? We're, now we're going into our array of colliders. The index is i. That's the whole point why we did this loop, and that is going to be his transform dot dot position so we're just we're taking the position of each of the indexes in the arrays right so we're starting with number one obviously right so index zero index one index two transform position all right so now that we have the position and we have our forward we need a direction. So now we need one more vector. Direction to, oh, can't have a space, to target. And that equals, um, you know what, let's put another vector up here. Vector three, our position. Let's do that. And let's take the same guy. And the reason why I'm putting him up here compared to sticking this stuff down here is because during the loop, our position, our forward isn't changing. So I, I have no need to recalculate that stuff out. I'm just going to calculate it once. So our so the direction to the target, this is, this is super critical because it's used in so many things, is target position minus our position there we go now we have a direction so now we have our forward direction 
and we have the direction to wherever the target is to us. All right, so we now have a, we need a float. Uh, we'll do it, we'll call it an angle test. And that equals a vector three dot angle, the angle from our, our forward, whichever way we're facing, to the target, or direction to target. So now we have the angle. And we now know the angle to all these targets. So what we're saying up here is we have an angle. So if angle test is less, or, or I guess you could do equal, then angle dot value. So if this angle is less than this angle, then this, then whatever collider that we have seen is in our sight cone. It is there. Right? And if that's the case, then let's say returned object dot value is equal to colliders, and we're still talking with that same I dot game object. And then we could also call our event. So we can say FSM Uh, event and what do we call it has target so we'll fill our return value here with whatever the hell we hit with this and then we're going to call this event so it actually happens and the one thing we didn't do is on this overlap sphere we didn't put in the layer mask so the layer mask, now normally you can literally just put a layer mask value in there. You can't do that with Playmaker. And that's why if you look in there, again, the Raycast, great for references. See how they have these, this thing called an action helper? This is how they convert um, various things up here into the proper methods. Right, so I, I can literally just copy and paste it. Now I didn't call mine layer mask. I just called mine uh, layer layers. Yeah, and then I didn't call mine invert mask. I just called it invert dot value. So now that overlap sphere is going to honor our layer system. So that is now functional. So that is our do site, and we can do it every frame or we can do it on just the enter. So let's test it. Excellent. So, <clears throat> we grab our little guy here and like I said, this stuff hasn't really changed it should still all be the same we can now put layers so I can say and you see how we actually see the layers so this by code from what we've seen is technically not a layer system this is these are just integers and that's where that action layer and that UI hint come in because it says oh this person wants like they, they have an integer array but they want the layers so playmaker converts it to the layer system so let's say we're going to only hit players and then you can invert it or not i'm not going to do that let's tick on every frame and let's make sure our capsule up here is on that layer of player fuck i should start a wrapping system or something sweet jesus so let's grab this guy so his returned object right now, and you see how this has the return side? That's that action settings that we put in. It's just to help separate things. And if I take our capsule and I come along, oh, 
we can see the capsule. Well, that's not right. Look at that. And if we come along too far, oh, it's not clearing. Uh, let's clear that. And if we come along here, we have, it's obviously hitting us here. And you think like, okay, well that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why is it hitting us? And let me show you something. We're at, okay, we're at 60. We'll make that a nice even number. If I double that, where are we? Does that look like it makes more sense now at 120 compared to the 60? All right, and that's due. Oh, let's move this guy out. Um, and again, let's show you that on the other side. So here, like we're not being seen, we're not being seen, and we're seen again. Like, we're not touching that cone yet. We're like, what the hell, right? We double it. Yes, we are touching the cone. So why does doubling it affect it like that? Well, obviously, the cone's wider. That's kind of a stupid question. But <clears throat> this is where... Uh, in, in the ways of the debug... We have a negative value that we divided by two so that we're in the middle and it fans out. In the ways of angle, um, angle to the target, we're saying 60. Um, <clears throat> the way angle is calculated is that 60 degrees from whatever direction we gave it, which we gave it our forward, that's 60 degrees this way and 60 degrees this way. So we're actually 120 degrees. Our debugging is based on a negative value divided by two. So <clears throat> we now obviously have an issue, right? Easy fix, very easy fix. Um, we just divide it by two, right? Pretty simple. So let's look at that. Let's see. Okay, so our where are we here? So our angle test is less or equal than our angle value divided by two. That's it, that's all we're doing. That's all it takes, that's it, simple. And you can see now, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. if we now, actually let's go into an ISO. So this is a nice, easy, clear look at this. So we have, now let's make sure this is just a nice, simple 60. We take our capsule, and as we drive it over, it's not hit at all. And as we enter this, we have hit it, right? That angle point, and it's it's based, it's of course you know based on these on the anchor points, because um, that's where the destination is calculated from the angle. Is is it triggered right at that point? And if I check the other side, right again, it's going to happen right at that point. Right, we're entering it, we're entering it, and we've cross that threshold and we can see it it's there All right so now our little thing is working and we can check our events we can say has seen target All right so we can hit play and oh I come out of ISO that's screwing me right up All right so we can see there's our cone I take this guy we truck along we've seen and it goes over to the next state perfect that's what we want that is everything so 
let's say okay this is this is our target not that we're actually going to use that and let's say let's bring this guy down a bit expand him out not something too crazy and let's bring this alpha down a little farther and let's say we have seen target let's let's change that to red okay now we can oh and I'm literally just gonna copy this and paste it only this one we're gonna make the range a little less and we're gonna make the angle a little wider and we're gonna alter the color to a yellow or an orange and this one's now gonna be the event of or and oh my god why whatever oh yeah and then I'm gonna copy that again and paste it again and now we're gonna go with a much bigger angle we're gonna bring this radius down even farther and we're gonna change it to more of like a green and change the event to green All right so now we have essentially three stages that could happen right <clears throat> and I can now copy this and I can paste it and paste it so if this is our base idle we we have no target right and if we see and we get a green we can come down here so this is our green state well in our green state we don't need a green event because we're in the green state right <clears throat> but we can go to say an orange state and this guy would also go to an orange state so this is our orange state all right so in our orange state we can um, or we can't go to our, our orange but we can go back to our green no we can't go back to our green you'd have to no let's not go back to our green so we're gonna get rid of that get rid of that and this one uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's leave that there and then we're gonna also have our red state So red goes to the red state, red goes to the red state, red goes to the red state. So you don't necessarily have a green state. Like you don't you don't kind of go backwards because you're always going to be in that lesser cone as well, or typically. Right? Like if I'm like if the if this guy is sitting here, he's in both cones. Right? <clears throat> so it, it's kind of hard to go say you're going backwards if you seen but what we can do is test so now we have we have no target we have a green state we have an orange state and we have a red state so we need a way to say that this isn't uh, that it isn't in here Right, so we might want to go in and add, or I guess we could just do an angle check. Right, so <clears throat> what would be the easiest way to do that? Um, no, I think. Yeah, you know what? Let's 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 add a not seen event right and then we could we could add those in at, as well that it'll be a little more universal it'll be a little more more solid of a, of a system 
right? The, the, also, the other thing, you also want to make sure those are put in order. Uh, it'll just help facilitate the smoothness of it. So we, we need an event for not seen. Right, so all we need is, let's just put it here, FSM event, oh, a public FSM event, uh, not seen. Right? <clears throat> so all we're going to do there is if collider length is greater than zero, we have seen something, right? And we're, we're going to return something as long as it's within that angle. Um, So the thing we're going to want to do here is we need to put it yeah, probably here. Let's do fsm.event not seen. So if we see a target, we're going to be firing off that event. That's going to happen first. So we this thing won't get hit. But if we've seen a target, and we know so the, the, the clutter length is greater than, than one, but we've gone out of that angle. That means we've looped through this whole thing and we're testing this angle. But this never got fired. So nothing is in that angle. If nothing's in the angle, then we have not seen something. Something's near us, but we have not seen it. So we'll reload that. So all it is now is um, I can now bring, we'll say the green back over here. But instead of having the target or has target, I want to be not seen. We're going to say lost target. Right? And if we've lost a target, we can go back up here. Beyond that, he's going to be the exact same. And same thing here is we're going to take the orange one. I'm, I'm not, not going to care too much about the green because that will actually take care of itself. Is I'm going to paste the orange guy. But we're not orange. Now we've lost. Oh, we're, actually, we don't want anything there. Has not seen. We want lost the target and we're just going to go back up one and this is why we don't need uh, like I don't need to bring the green down in here because if this site hasn't picked them up if, if the orange hasn't picked them up we're going to go here if the green hasn't picked them up then we're going to go end up going back here anyways so it's just going to go up and down those those tiers all right so now we're in the red state and all it is here is we can take this guy and we can say paste and we're going to not say has target instead we're going to say lost target and we can now stick him to go up there all right so there we have our different systems and if we now see that in play we have no targets Oh, we have a little bit of an issue there. So we need to fix that. Lost target. Why are we getting a lost target in here? He is outside the angle. We're going to have to double check that. Um, but as, as you see, it's, it's as you move 
in and around except for apparently way out here lost target why is that one not firing at all oh because there's oh, okay um let's go in there and alter that a bit because we also need it so that if <clears throat> if the array is zero that it also fires off lost target right because right now it's only firing off if the array is larger than zero but you're out of that angle and we don't we don't want that So what do we have? We have now So we have not seen, right? But this only is happening if the collider length is greater than zero. But we need this to also happen if it's less than zero. Then we have not seen, right? <clears throat> that should be fine because here we're running through that that should that should be fine just test that real quick make sure that portion is working Other than our little it flickering back and forth, that is working. All right, because now we are sitting here, and and this guy we have a lost target, but we haven't lost our target. That's the thing. All right, because we are sitting in. We are in, like, we're right in that view. Right? So if we're right in that view, that should not be firing off. The has not seen, but apparently it is. Yes, I probably should have put out else in that statement. Because if you don't take the event of seen, it is going to get to the lost target not seen. Alright, that makes sense. Sometimes, I tell you, Lord Tundra, simplest things can screw you up. That's okay. It's okay to fuck up. That's how we get better. So, so what's happening is so this part works now right because if we have nothing here let's do the not seen event fair enough if we do have something it runs through this now if we're in angle this fires if we're not in angle um, then this is, but we're still here, then this is firing. No, oh, shouldn't that be okay? Because we're not seen. We're not in the angle, so we're not seen. Maybe my logic here is messed up. Because here... We were in the angle. 
but we're not taking the target right so if that <clears throat> right yeah so here we are we are in the angle but we're not using this in within those states so if we aren't using this eventually when this finishes <coughs> it hits this and we're not we're getting the not seen event right right so we need a way right this one's fine because if there's no length then we're not seeing but if we are here we need a way to use that how do we want to do that so okay let me ponder this briefly so we're running through we have seen something we're doing the angle check but we're not using this when the angle checks done we don't want to put it else here because we're running through the array and if we're running through the array the first thing might not be in the angle the second thing might be right which is fine to put the target we have seen a target so if we've seen a target we've seen a target it doesn't matter where in the array it is but if we haven't seen a tar target we might have seen the you know the third collider in the array and then we have seen the target so we can't stick this in an else sitting there that won't work what we can do is bool has target equals false and if we are oh we can't use has target we have an event called has target we'll just call it has screw it you can name anything you want but all right so that also means that has equals true I don't know if we want to put it there do we want to put it there yeah because we're we're in we are in the angle we can see the target has is true then all we're going to do is if has we'll invert it because I like to invert things because that's just the way I roll then we can do this all right so <clears throat> we're just going to do a quick little bool test we're just locking that in there with bool so if if we can see the target we have a target then this is going to be you know this isn't going to fire no matter what because we can see a target if you can't see a target he's default is false this will never turn true this will be this will shoot off life is grand how's that for a solution does that work hope that works let's hope it works let's test this fucking thing let's see how this works all right so let's okay so we are why is that nope that's still collider you know what that it's not seen no because you are seen you were sitting right there in the middle of it why aren't you seen how are you losing target all right let's look into that do you know what i'm gonna grab a coffee so i got my coffee see here and <clears throat> it dawned on me we have we have two issues no we already fixed one we have one issue so we have the bool so if we don't use this event the bool protects so this doesn't fire because we're still in that cone we're not using the event but that means we're not going to be using this event either that's perfect that's fine but what I didn't put in is if we don't fire this event and this event can't fire because we can like he is in target this does an if and then it's going to do this one so we simply need to put an else up here so we we can't put an else down below because the way it is the bool works so <clears throat> but we, we we need to lock this one out as well 
So let's save that. Said so now this the system. Now if you wanted to obstacle uh, detection, like if there's walls in the way, you would have to put a raycast system in there as well, or make a state for that uh, to check. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just <clears throat> if you want. I mean, if you really wanted to flesh it out, you could use a uh, arrays and stuff like that. But here, now we have we're in our different states based on wherever we are in this site going. Perfect. It is now working the way we want it to work. So what does that mean? Well, let's give us a float. Um, let's call it our detection. And up here, set detection. No. Let's do a float add. detection let's add negative one every frame per second and then let's float clamp it because we don't want to go into our negatives all right let's just clamp it let's clamp detection from zero to one every frame and I, you know what we could probably even bring that down let's go with like 0.25 and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring it over here but now we're not going to subtract we're actually going to add 0.25 actually no let's, let's, let's add 0.1 just small and then let's float compare make sure this is at the bottom and if detection is equal to one we have been detected or even if it's greater no not that it will because we have it clamped right so we are detected and then we can take this same logic copy those put them in the orange state and let's add those events detected orange state let's go a little faster though let's go 0.25 and then the red state let's again add those same things detected only in the red state let's go much faster let's add um, one <clears throat> so it'll add one per second so it'll take one second which might even be slow could bring that up to say two so it'll hit one in half a second All right and if it's <clears throat> we're back here it'll diminish now while that's happening uh, we could add another FSM so if this is site this guy could uh, FSM float if, if, if I was to do it right, I would base, base it on float changing, not on every frame. F, FSM float changed. Which I mean, reality, I could probably just have gotten the float and then did the change as well. But whatever, this will, this will work. So we're going to look into site, we're going to look into our detection, and we're going to store detection. And if it is changed, we need to update uh, graphic. And if we're going to update the graphic, oh, see, and detection is a bool. Okay. So we're going to have to get FSM float anyways. Where then we're going to get from the site, we're going to get the detection. D Let's 
actually just spell it right this time. And then let's set fill. So I am using a graphic, not a slider for this. Uh, just the way I set it up. You can technically use anything to the detection. Then we'll finish that and go back here and wait for another change. So now we should have um, our capsule. And if we come in, it starts to fill. And we leave, it drops. You can see it down here, just in case you're not paying attention. And if we come into, say, one of the higher cones, it'll fill faster. And if we go into the highest cone, it fills much faster. Um, I should probably alter those so that that seems a little more evident. So if we're in the green state, let's add point zero 0.05. Let's make it super slow. And if we're in this one, let's go point, point 0.1. Now let's go, let's go point zero 0.05 here. Let's go something like stupidly slow. This will make it very evident that this is working. And then down here, let's go uh, point 0.2. There. I mean, uh, you wouldn't set it up that way normally. I mean, when you hit the red, it would, should go pretty quick. But this will give us more of a clear definition that, you know, like, like look, it, it's climbing and it's slow. It's definitely faster. And if I come back in here, it's slow again. I come out, it's there. I go into here, but you see how it's got the different rates of climbing? So there we have a nice little detection system. And if we stay in here for too long, which is excessively long for how we have it set, we'll also have that we have been detected. All right, so there is <coughs> set. Now this system also works wonderful, wonderful for attacks, right? Because you could easily make a cone that is just small, right, at whatever angle you want, and check it, um, basically on an animation event or something like that, um, or whatever whatever you deem necessary. And if it has a target, you've done you're hitting them, you've done damage. If it doesn't, then you missed, right? Kind of idea. You could run it every frame, and then not use the not scene, and then just have it deactivate on also on an animation event or or on a timer, right? whatever. Beautiful way for damage. Great system for damage. But as you see, it works wonderfully as well for sight. And obviously those are all fully adjustable. Now normally I would probably use as an added bonus just because I'm just that such a nice guy. Let's use <coughs> uh, red sight. And put that there. Orange. Oh my god, I can't spell worse shit. Uh, and green sight. And stick that there. And then we could now technically. Um, do, do, do. I didn't do the ranges. I, yeah, well, whatever. We will do. We'll, we'll do the angle. So this is our red red site this is our orange site this is our green site and you can come down here and obviously do the same thing with all of them all right so now it's a nice thing i mean if you're only if you're only going to change one I mean, well, if you want to do any alterations instead of going into every freaking state here and being like oh my god ah. Um, we're only changing three variables, but it, 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 unless you also bring the angles in as well, the, which you should probably do, but I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, <clears throat> to which personally, the thing I like to use also is FSM controls. Mm. 
where the hell is it? Playmaker controls. Right, and I, I like to keep these things up at the top. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these things or used these things. I don't know. I, I personally like them. But I could have a whole bunch of different things. I can close those down. Don't matter. And I can say under site. I mean, I can click on just open it up. I can now adjust all those. All right. And right. Like that was that was our angles. So if we did like 60, 90, 120. Right. And I can I can open those up again and I can see that. Uh, da, 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 that those are oh, it's showing zero there for whatever reason but here they are good alright we hit play we see them populate everything's good everything's fine and I can control those up here and it's controlling down here Through the control system, so you, so this one control can activate a whole bunch of FSMs and just one nice place to keep all your variables. In case you didn't know about that one, and it's just a matter of how do you want to set this thing kind of up. Get all crazy fancy, right? You, you could have a fourth one that's a complete circle right around the player for like a one meter out kind of a thing. Or whatever the case is. Um, but anywho, that is probably great for the video. There is a nice little system that calculates time based in different site cones. Uh, yeah, I mean it's just it's a it's a nice, pretty system. I think for yeah calculating times and site counts. We're in the green, we can see it climbing. We're in the orange, it's climbing faster. We're in the red, it's climbing the fastest. It hits full. We have been seen. Right? So if you want a stealth game, uh, maybe a horror game, uh, <clears throat> whatever, something along those lines, beautiful little system to do that with.